I've been holding off on this for a while, but with the addition of a new character added today, I figured this could be a good first opportunity for me to talk about this. So, Marvel's Avengers, the video game, not the movies, the video game that came out last year. So, they recent they today as of me recording this, they have added Spider-Man. I mean, there was li very little to expect with this game. Some of y'all may not know, Marvel's Avengers might easily be N not might easily, but might potentially be one of, if not my least favorite video game ever. And I mostly say that because of how disappointed I was with this game. I went into this game, I'm just going to make this a Marvel Avengers rant. I went into this game with such, like not high expectations, but with expectations. Like I was looking at this and I'm just like, you know what, this, kind of, this looks kind of cool. Like I'm really excited for this. And pre-ordered the game, the I think it was the Digital Deluxe Edition. I've never felt like I've wasted my money so badly on anything in my life. So, yeah, I got the game. And if you pre-ordered it, you got it several days early. I finished it within like, within like a day because I was grinding the story like crazy. But once you complete the story... Which isn't that long either. There's nothing. There's freaking nothing. Like the most you could like. Oh my gosh. Like the, the story itself. Okay. It wasn't that bad. I have some issues though. With the fact that this is called an Avengers game. And yet. It takes to almost the. I want to say it's like the second to last mission. Until you get the entire team on your roster. You start off the game and you play as all of them. Then you switch to being Kamala Khan for a good portion of the time. You get Hulk on your roster shortly after. You get Iron Man a couple missions later. Then you have to wait half the story before you even get Black Widow. Then you get Thor as for a mission like 75% of the way in. But you don't unlock him on your roster again. Until the second to last mission when you get Captain America. This is a freaking Avengers game. You mean to tell me I have to wait the entire game before I can even get the entire team on my roster? Are y'all mental? That drives me up the wall because I'm just like, this is... It calls itself an Avengers game, but it's really Kamala Khan featuring the Avengers. Because the entire thing focuses on her. And I'm sitting there like, it's not... That's not a bad thing. The stuff that focuses on her isn't terrible. It's terrible in this game because this is an Avengers game. And it's focusing on her more than it is the actual Avengers. And not to mention, I don't know what the developers of this game and just like, because you got Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix. I don't know what they've been smoking making this game because I'm just like, they are, uh, oh my gosh. The amount of, even play through the story, the amount of bugs I encountered. I shouldn't have encountered that many bugs on in like the first week of playing, in like the first one or two days of playing. I the amount of bugs I encountered, where it's like characters would randomly be, not be in the right costumes, where costumes would relock themselves if you previewed them, and it took that was the biggest issue so many players had with this game, and it took the developers like almost like two weeks to do to fix it. They kept putting out random. The amount of patches they had to make for this game are unreal because I'm sitting there like, this game's not even been out for a week. Why have I had to get 10 different patches for this game? And again, the costume relocking themselves was such a pain in the butt because it would relock some of the f my actual favorite costumes. So I had to use a bunch of other random ones. And I'm just sitting there like, this is the biggest issue that everybody's been having with this game why why is this not their number one priority in fixing it the amount of oh my gosh they i this is one reason why i said i'm really trying to figure out what exactly they've been smoking because i'm just like they've had the amount of patches they, they've had to do for this game is ridiculous it's actually ridiculous how many they had to just in the first week and 
the thing that one of the things that most people were really excited for is all the different characters you're gonna you will get to unlock because they have announced like a bunch of different like very cool um characters will be able to play as let me tell you guys something this game has been out for over a year you would think you would think that they would have taken in this huge amount of time they would have added a a lot of characters they've added four four freaking characters they added kate bishop then it took them a while to add clint barton hawkeye then it took them a while to add black panther and they've just added spider-man but here's the pro okay getting to my what's really sparked me to do this rant spider-man this is marvel's most popular character this is arguably the most popular character in the entire history of comic books. The only character who, could probably, who rivals him is Batman. And he looks to be the worst character in this game. When I heard that they were going to add him into this game and after playing the game, my I did not have any high expectations. My expectations were like, oh, the, his gameplay probably isn't going to be that great. So when I saw it, I'm just like, this is even worse. His combat looks so sluggish. The swinging looks like something straight out of the GTA 5 mod. And he has no story. Kate, Kate Bishop, Clint Barton, and Black Panther. They all had story missions. Spider-Man doesn't. And here's why. Because he is solely on PlayStation consoles I understand I understand Spider-Man is still a Sony product but the fact that he is just on a PlayStation console means you can't give him any sort of story because you can't have it because otherwise you run the risk of it affecting the main campaign campaign of this game and you can't have that happen because he's not available on Xbox or PC so you have to keep his role in the PlayStation role extremely minimum and once again, this is Spider-Man we're talking about. You can't make Spider-Man such a minimal part of this universe when this is freaking Spider-Man we're talking about. And I'm just like, I don't know what, so what caused Sony to have to make this decision because I'm just like, there are so many other games that have Spider-Man in there in a big game with other characters and it worked look at the lego games and all the ultimate alliance games heck ultimate alliance 3 released two years ago and that still had spider-man in it even lego marvel superheroes 2 he was you had several freaking spider-mans in that one um the no story thing drives me up the wall because i'm just sitting there like he, he can't get anything all you've done is just add a random character to have some cutscenes, and all we get are mi or like missions for him that are no different from everything that we've had since the start of this freaking game, and we just get random audio logs. I kid you not, that's it. That's all he gets. The only slight positive I can give is that Spider-Man has some of the has is pretty much the only character where I think a majority of his costumes look good. Because that's another massive issue I have with this game. The costumes look terrible. I don't mean like main costumes. Because a lot of the main costumes look alright. I think Iron Man looks fine. Cap's growing on me. But he doesn't look good. Black Widow's fine. Like pretty much all the other main costumes look fine. Even Spider-Man's original costume looks fine. But I'm just... Only good looking costumes in this game are the MCU suits, but even those are hard to play as because they are constantly glitching all the time because there's such different molds than the actual main suits in the game. So the only costumes that look good just cause even more glitches with this game. Go figure. Uh, going to Iron Man in particular, and even Captain America and pretty much everybody else. There are maybe like 40 costumes per character about 90% of them, especially for Iron Man and Cap and all of them, are recolors. 
that, oh my gosh. Oh, speaking of what, getting to my, because I'm pretty much done on the whole Spider-Man ranting and everything else, but getting to one of my, to my biggest issue with this game, like I said, when you finish the story, all you can do is do random missions to start leveling people up and getting gear. Getting freaking gear. To make your, to make your, and all it does is just make your characters punch a tiny bit stronger. And I'm just like, you never feel like you're doing anything special because no matter what combos you do, no matter what gear you put on, it doesn't feel like anything changes because it feels like you're doing the same amount of damage. You don't feel like there's any weight to your punches or just any of your attacks, whether it be to throwing your shield, smashing people with Hulk's fists, shooting people with Iron Man's repulsors. You don't feel like you're doing anything to these guys, no matter how much you level them up, no matter how much gear you get, you don't do anything to them. Also, one other thing I completely forgot to touch upon, this game's villains are absolutely terrible. No matter what part of the game you're playing, no matter what hero you're playing as, or what story you're doing, even with Spider-Man recently added, it's always AIM. The advanced idea mechanics, it's always them no matter what. There is no variety in villains whatsoever, aside from a couple of boss fights. You get a, bo a boss fight with Abomination, and you get the final boss fight with Modok. That's about as different, and occasionally once with Taskmaster, those are about as different boss fights you're going to get, because you are, no matter what, you are always fighting either random aim agents or aim robots. And it's still like that, and it's terrible. I'm so sick of aim, having to just fighting aim by this point. When the game has been out for a year, and there is so much more DLC to play as, we need more villains than just the same aim agents and the same aim robots since we've had since launch day. Good gracious, this is so lazy. And I hate making this comparison because it's such an unfair comparison. But comparing it to Spider-Man PS4, where... You could do so many cool combos, you had so much different web gadgets. When you would mix up your gear, like your web gadgets, you felt like you were doing some cool stuff. And you really felt, the like when you leveled up Spider-Man and got all these new skills, you really felt like you were hitting them stronger and that you were really feeling more like Spider-Man. That's such an unfair comparison, but at the same time, it wasn't that long ago. So I'm, I hate the gear system in this game. As soon as I heard about it, I immediately was so disappointed because I never played Destiny. I never played it. But there's a reason that game died out when it did. Because I'm not trying to trash on Destiny before any of y'all start ch chatting some crap about me. I'm just like, I'm not talking crap about Destiny. It doesn't work for an Avengers game. <coughs> oh, excuse me. It's just, it, that kind of gaming style just doesn't work here. Because it causes you to have to constantly replay missions. Speaking of that, the landmarks in this game are, are awful. What made so many other different Marvel games... Like, Okay, a more fair comparison in Spider Man PS4. Ult the Ultimate Alliance. Ultimate Alliance is what this game tried to be and failed. What was so cool about that game, you had access to such a huge chunk of the Marvel Universe. Pretty much right off the bat. And what made each and what made all the levels so cool was the fact that you went to all these different landmarks through Marvel history. You had bases at Stark Tower. You had bases at Sanctum Sanctorum. You had bases. You had bases and levels in Asgard. You had so many cool level designs and just places that were right from the Marvel comics. You go to Doctor Doom's castle for the final level. You start out on the helicarrier. I'm. It really. I'm really still trying to process how it's like they came to this conclusion of just doing. For the landmarks in Marvel's Avengers, there's no special landmark. Every single level takes place in New York, and just a random place in New York, not an Avengers Tower, just random streets in New York. 
the jungle, the forest, the desert, and can you in the tundra? And that's about it. There is no unique Marvel landmark anywhere in this game. The most you get is Wakanda and the Black Panther stuff, but even then in those missions, you're in the jungle and you can only see Wakanda in the distance, which is no different from New York with seeing Avengers Tower in the distance. <sighs> this game... I'm gonna, like... The worst part about this game is the fact that everybody knows it's terrible. The, the fact that in the first week, it lost 96% of its players is awful. And it really pains me to have to say this. It pains me to have to say that Spider-Man is bad because anybody who knows me knows that I love the Avengers. I love Spider-Man. I love these characters are some of my all-time favorites. And to see them in a game like this where it feels like they didn't even try to where even, I can't remember if it was Crystal Dynamics or Square Enix, but they threw the other company under the bus by saying it was their fault the game was bad. The, the game is still in, has still not made its money back and it's been over a year. So I'm just like, it this really pains me that this game was as bad as it was. And I have not played Guardians of the Galaxy yet. But the fact that I believe it's... I, again, I can't remember which one of them worked on it. But either Crystal Dynamics or Square Enix. One of them too, I think it was mine of Crystal Dynamics, worked on Guardians of the Galaxy. Apparently, according to everybody, it's a great game. Which really says something because when, I, when Guardians was first announced, I was like, oh no. And the more I hear about it, I just kept thinking it was going to be terrible. And then I see gameplay of it. And hear what some of my friends had to say about it. And, I'll, and they were like, this is one of the best games I played all year. And I was like, okay. And then I watched gameplay and I was like, oh, okay. Like, it's really, it, I don't know. I, I don't know what else to say. Just other than, I will try, I will talk about Guardians of the Galaxy when I review whenever I get the game. Um, maybe, I might have it by January, maybe, but if you haven't played Avengers, don't. Or if you're gonna play it, wait till it's, like, as cheap as possible. Because it's already gone from, like, $60 or 70 to being, like, 15 bucks. Like, it did that in, like, the first month or so. So, if you want to play it, play it for the story, maybe, and then just stop. It's really not worth it. You're wasting your money. Go, go back to one of, in, like, the one of your older consoles... And just play Ultimate Alliance. Play any of them. I think all three Ultimate Alliance games are great. I love playing all of them. And just don't touch Avengers. Anyways, that's going to have to be all for me. Later, Webheads.